Okay, there. Okay. So yeah, Professor Bhatia, you can begin now. Okay. You want me to? Yes. Uh, I'm very happy to welcome Dr. Ram Subramanian, K. Ram Subramanian. He's a well-known scholar of uh, many things, among them Indian mathematics. He's an interpreter, translator, uh, editor, compiler, and many other things for ancient texts, ancient and medieval texts. Uh, scholar of Sanskrit and mathematics and Malayalam and other Indian languages in which mathematics was done. He is uh, author and editor of uh, several books on that subject. I am very glad to have him here today to talk on some parts of Indian mathematics. Welcome, Ram. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Bhatia. So it is a real pleasure to present a colloquium at Ashoka University. In fact, Professor Bhatia told me more than one and a half years ago that this should happen. But then uh, I'm happy that it is happening today. So this uh, topic that I have presented in the screen, Turangagati is a name which many of you may not be that familiar with. Turaga in Sanskrit means horse. So Turagagati refers to the horse movement. Another word is, of course, most of us would have heard about this magic square, but pan diagonal is something which many of us may not be familiar with. I will introduce uh, initially how we generally can classify the magic squares and then take you to the work of Narayana Pandita. So Narayana Pandita was a 14th century mathematician who has authored a very, very important work called Ganita Kaumudi. So in the 14th chapter of Ganita Kaumudi, we find a detailed discussion on magic squares. So one of the methods that he has presented is the Storagagati method. Okay. So just to uh, make you familiar with the terms that we will be frequently using. So let me start with the classification of the magic squares. Um, this magic squares seems to have uh, been a topic of interest to a variety of uh, people starting from school children to even the greatest of mathematicians. So Srinivasa Ramanujam's notebook has magic squares. Now this can be broadly divided into three types. One is semi-magic square, the other is normal magic square, and the third is pan-diagonal magic square. When I say semi-magic, so this adjective semi refers to the fact that so only the rows and columns so they give the magic sum if i say normal so it means the diagonals the principal diagonals so so this diagonal for instance and the anti diagonal they also give the magic sum so it is basically an arrangement of uh, numbers and uh, if this happens to be the arrangement, so then we call it as a magic square because it gives the same sum. If you look at uh, the magic square in the right hand side, we have called it as pan diagonal magic square. These two magic squares have been filled with the arithmetic sequence 1 to 16, as you can see, both the squares. But there is a distinction between the square in the left hand side and the square in the right hand side. In the right hand side, so we have just uh, highlighted a few squares with the same colors. So as you can see, so this off diagonal things, so they also give the magic sum. So these things add to magic sum and uh, this will give you the magic sum. And so too, you can think of this. So such a square 
wherein the broken diagonals or the wrap around diagonals as we call so we have these three and then we go to the next one so this is like a torus kind of a thing so if they also give the magic sum then we call it pan diagonal magic square so this is basically the terminology now a little bit of history how old is the study of magic square as you find in various uh, literature <clears throat> So here we find an interesting verse at the beginning of the chapter which deals with magic square in Narayana Pandita's Ganita Komudi. He says, Atha Bhuvanatraya Guruna Upadishta Mishena Manibhadraya Kautukine Bhutaya Shredhi Sambandhi Sadganitam. So this is the verse. So Shredhi Sambandhi means so that which is connected with a sequence, arithmetic sequence. The word Shredhi basically refers to kind of a step. So an arithmetic sequence can be conceived as steps. And therefore, that which is related with an arithmetic sequence. So that is what Narayana presents. Shredhi Sammandhi Sadganita. And then he says, Upadishta Mishena Manibhadraya. So some divine origin is being spoken of. So he said, so Shiva revealed to someone called Manibhadra. And uh, this has to do with playing with some arithmetic sequence. Why is it done? So the second verse of the chapter presents three reasons. Sadganita chamatkritaye. So this is the first reason. Yantra vidam pritaye, the second and the third reason is Kuganakanam Garvakshiptyai. So Chamatkriti is something which brings in some excitement. So whenever you see some charm, to add charm, so that is the kind of thing, to embellish something is Chamatkriti. Yantra Vidam Pritaye. So means, so Yantra is something which many of you would have heard at least the term. There is something called Shri Yantra and so on. So if you go to various shops, some of them would have placed a copper plate at the back, okay, wherever the cashier sits. So you will see some kind of a drawing. So some nice geometric shapes will be there. In that, we may also find some letters embedded, okay, some syllables embedded. So those syllables, so they refer to various deities and that is what is called Yantra. But now what is this magic square? And what has it got to do with the Yantra? So that may be a little puzzling, but uh, it seems to have been employed. So in the context of, so wading away, so some kind of unwanted situation and so on and so forth, just like various syllables filling a certain pattern is likely to bring in some well-being for you so too these numbers seem to have been used in those days so that is why he is using this yantra vidam pritaye i'll give you one more reference to this then the third thing is very interesting kuganakanam garvakshiptyai he says <laughs> so kuganaka is so those who consider themselves as mathematicians these imposters so you pose this problem and then he may not be able to do so then their garva will be gone so this is the third reason. So the term that he uses is Bhadraganitam. So Bhadraganita Khyam Vakshiye. So I'm just going to present Bhadraganita. So Bhadraganita, the very name, so Bhadra is used to refer to something which is uh, going to bring in some prosperity, so well-being and so on. So this mathematics itself seems to have got that name or one can also associate with this Bhadra. So that which was initially revealed to Mani Bhadra and therefore it could be called as Bhadra Ganita. Either way it is, so that is what it is. The earliest literary evidence that we find for the occurrence of a magic square is in the work of Nagarjuna. So we guess that it is the same as the philosopher Nagarjuna. So, but one is not very sure of it. So some attempt were made to trace, but that is what it seems to be. Let us see. More research seems to be 
uh, required in order to establish on firm footing. So those scholars have really agreed upon. So I'll just quickly tell you uh, that uh, this Nagarjuna, uh, there is a work called Kakshaputa Tantra. So this is available. So some search was done and we were able to trace this verse also. So here we find Neelam Chapi Daya Chalo Navabhum. So I'm just reading this to connect this with this, which we will be referring back towards the end of the lecture. That is why I'm just introducing this right away. So here you find a certain way of representing these numbers, Neelam. So there is a notation called Katapayadi. So if uh, some of you are not familiar, so I may not have time to explain, you can easily see in the web. So this uh, Neelam, so Ni refers to zero and the La refers to number three. So Neelam is 30. So Chapi, so each syllable represents a certain digit. So this is what is called Katapayadi notation. And uh, the syllables that are employed in uh, writing this Devanagari script, rather this letters, so have been used to uh, denote these numbers. So we come up to this Tanam. So Tanam is basically 06. Shatam Yojayet. If you look at the square, the magic sum happens to be 100. So whichever way you do, you will get 100. So 6 plus 32 plus 44 plus 18 will be 100. So this is how it is. Another interesting thing that I would like you to note here is this has been generated by conceiving of four sequences, arithmetic sequences, which I have denoted below 6, 10, 14, 18, 16, 20, and so on, and 22 and 32. Okay. So this is not uh, a continuous arithmetic sequence. So with the same common difference starting with one, but there are four different sequences. So they will be called as Yamalanka Yugala. Yamala means pair, Yugala is again pair, pair of pairs. So there are various ways by which one can construct this magic square. So what we will be primarily uh, taking you through is a certain technique by which you can construct such pan diagonal magic squares. And uh, what is the purpose of this? So this has been nicely brought out. So here, if you read this, he says, Bhuta Preta Pishacha Rakshasa Mukhan Sarpan Khalan Samharet Agnim Chaurabhayati Nashanamidam Nagarjunam Nirmitam. So this is where we find the evidence that this is something which has been constructed by Nagarjuna. And what is the purpose? So in order to uh, see Bhuta Preta Pishacha, so to drive away kind of a thing, any fear that is generated out of them. And uh, he also mentions Chora Bhayadi. Okay? So to uh, eradicate the fear of thieves and so on. So this seems to be the purpose that has been stated along with this. So for this magic square with some hundred. <laughs> so why am I insisting? Because this also seems to play a interesting role. Then if we see, uh, there is another uh, magic square, which you find in a completely different context. This appears in the famous work called the Brihat Samhita of Varaha Mihira. So Varaha Mihira, as many of you may be knowing, so this Brihat Samhita should have been composed at the beginning. So he is just associated with Phi Not Phi Common Era. Okay? So around that time. So this work seems to have been composed there. He calls this as Sarvato Bhadram. So Sarvato Bhadram. So this is an interesting name which uh, Varah Mihira has given. So I am not going to delve on why is it called so, but the only thing that I want to point out here is he seems to be using it in the context of preparation of various kinds of perfumes. So how is uh, it related to that? So Varavira says, assume that you take some 16 different things, <laughs> okay, which are fragrant in itself. Now you try to generate a mixture of them. So you take uh, two portions of this, three portions of this, 
so that is what he is saying dvitri indriya ashta bhagaihi this is a different kind of a system uh, indriya basically means sense organs so that is five in number so this is called bhuta sankhya earlier we saw numbers being given in katapayadi so here we find numbers being given in bhuta sankhya system ashta is ashta so then he says so if you just see that this is also a sort of a pan diagonal magic square so who sum is 18 for instance let us say 5 1 4 okay uh so this is huh <laughs> so this uh, this shodashake kachcha puta is the name that he gives okay yatha tathe mishrite chaturdravye so that is the context in which he is giving this so chaturdravye the four elements can be mixed in various ways to get this numbers okay now another interesting anecdote before i move on to the method given by narayan pandit so this um, george grierson who seems to have been an extraordinary scholar in those days uh, around the end of 19th century so writes a very interesting article a short article which has been published in indian antiquary so here he mentions so this kind of a magic square so which has to be constructed with 1 2 3 and so on with 16 in the pan diagonal form so it has been described as american puzzle he says about 7 months ago he is referring to something so the problem he says is is to arrange the 16 consecutive numbers 1 to 16 in four rows of four each so essentially what he means is something like this in four rows of four each and then he says uh Uh, in such a way that the total of every line and the group of four will amount to exactly thirty-four. Okay, what does he mean by every group of four? So this is what it is. So you choose this four, or you choose this four, or you choose all the four at the corners. So all of them will give you the same magic sum okay choose any four consecutive numbers so you will be able to in the rows and columns so this is like a torus now so in the torus these four will form so here he says so this is uh, something though it has been he making uh, various rounds and uh, driven several people nearly mad that's what he says so he says that this is something which has been there in the tradition in india for a long time to prove that he says i am just going to present a few verses from one of the ancient texts and uh, here he says this text which has been authored by raghunandana bhattacharya called smriti tattva has a certain chapter which is called jyotish tattva So in that, in some context, he is giving this. So he says, "Panchare kha samulikhe tiriya gur dvakrame nahi." So this is a graphic description of how you have to even construct this diagram. See, panchare kha means you draw five lines. See, so the horizontally and vertically and so on. So then you will create shoda sama padya. You will create sixteen cells. Then he says, "Go and fill." One eight three six. So he just says, "Ye kam adye." Adye means in the first cell you fill one. Then he says, "Munau trayam." Munau means it is the seventh cell. So this is the seventh cell. So you fill three there. Muni is bhuta sankhya. Munau trayam. Then he says, "Nava me sapta." In the ninth cell you go and fill seven. <laughs> Dadyatu. Then he says, "Banam pancha dashe." Pancha dashe means fifteenth cell. So bana is basically shara in Bhuta Sankhya, which gives the number five. So he just says where you have to place these numbers. 
what is being placed as you can see it is a sequence arithmetic sequence 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 having said this he further says ekadina samam nyayam ichchaam kardham trikona ke this is a little test so it took some time to figure out for me so he says ekadina samam so trikona ke trikona ke means so you have to consider basically so if you conceive like this so let me just explain to you if you just trikona is this right so you just take off this now in the in the third cell tritiye kone so you have to just consider so suppose you are sitting here so you go to the along the diagonal you go to the other corner other vertex okay so that he says so this sum plus this sum so the number that you are going to fill here now you can see that it is empty okay so this is empty so this has to be filled so it has to be filled with such a number that you add with one etc that should give you half the magic sum see you can see this ekadina trikona ke ekadina means what so he just said you fill 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 where to fill he also said then he says choose the one cell okay leaving between one cell choose the diagonally the third one so it is like a trikona right angle triangle the other corner okay so then he says trikona ke whatever you fill there that has to be added with ekadina and what will that give you ichchankardham so ichchanka means so ichcha is whatever you desire so you say i want a magic square with number 48 okay so then he says the number that you fill in here okay should give you 24 when added with one so here what has been chosen here in the right hand side is so you find 16 here you find one here so the magic sum here is 34 okay. so this is a pan diagonal magic square where the sum is 34 okay so you choose any of them you see so you have filled three so you have to put a 14 here so he essentially tells you through the verse that along the diagonal if you go leaving one square in between so the sum of those two should be half the magic sum okay. so this evidently will work this evidently will work when the number is even when the number is odd you cannot obviously have <laughs> Uh, this kind of a thing, it will not be a pan diagonal, you can still construct, but that is a different thing which I am not going to explain now. So, further he says, Tada dvatrimshadadihi syatu chatushkoshteshu sarvataha. Sarvataha means you choose any of the four cells, you will get number 34. Okay, so this is what he is trying to explain in this verse. Okay, so this is all just a certain background. And uh, which will be useful in trying to understand and appreciate what Narayana has done. Now you see this set of verses, which just to follow the previous set of verses. Okay. So here he says, what number has to be used for which kind of a benefit? So there has been a certain belief in the society. So that is all I wanted to tell you. So when I said Bhadra Ganitam means a certain kind of mathematics which can bring you Bhadra well-being so it is like yantra so there has been a certain belief so many of you will be surprised recently uh, this could be just an year ago or so okay so i was traveling somewhere in maharashtra okay within maharashtra so i went to a certain college <laughs> a group of institutions so there the principal took me to his office and uh, then we went to some other boardroom so there i was pleasantly surprised to see a magic square drawn on the wall just behind where the correspondent sits okay so then i was asking them what is this so they said this is uh, so somebody has given this so this is supposed to bring in uh, prosperity for us for this institution and this has worked for us now we are a big group of institutions 
okay so that is why i have put it anyway the reason for giving this uh, experience is so to just tell you that this has been there for a long time so here they say the darshanat dharanat tasam shubham syadeshu karmasu and so on so there seems to be a certain belief so that these numbers will fetch you these kinds of benefits okay now let me come to the work of narayana pandita before i move on to the mathematical technique so i just uh, give you an idea of uh, the text ganita kaumudi itself so this uh, this method toraga gati so appears in the 14th chapter of the text ganita kaumudi about ganita kaumudi so we were really fortunate to have some reasonably good edition of this text with most of the manuscripts already disappeared so in the recent times when i say recent last couple of hundred years ago so this uh, kolbrook who was a scholar who has translated some of the works of bhaskara so he identifies a manuscript and this is available in india office library in london then we don't find many manuscripts across india as we find for certain other works like leelavathi famous text so this padmakara dwivedi who is the son of a famous scholar called sudhakara dwivedi who has edited several works so he seems to have incidentally discovered so in his father's collection a copy of this ganita kaumudi and he wanted to bring out a good edition and he wrote to this india office library got this etc these are all partial manuscripts okay it doesn't have the entire ganita kaumudi so he with his father's copy and one or two other things which he could manage to get he brought out a certain edition and uh, this was brought in two parts in 1936 and 1942 then uh, we have somebody who has uh, written a thesis on only one chapter of this ganita kaumudi which has to do with magic squares and uh, somebody else has made a preliminary translation of the entire ganita kaumudi but i must tell you that we need to prepare a thoroughly revised edition of this extraordinary work so this is a very brilliant work somehow i mean it has got lost so the edition is also not satisfactory okay so coming to magic squares itself so this is about this uh, text ganita kaumudi so if we trace the history of this 4 by 4 magic squares among the literature so we find some studies which have happened in the early part of last century uh a serious serious study a serious study taken by mathematicians that is what i mean so this has been there in tradition uh, for uh, various recreational purposes in various civilizations that's quite old but a systematic mathematical study of this topic so this lemer carries out the study and then he says there are almost 5 lakh 40000 magic squares semi magic squares can be constructed with 4 by 4 mm. each one different from the other and then he says 7040 normal magic squares and somehow i mean he sort of miscalculated he says only 48 pan diagonal magic squares then later as you can see 5 years later this has been corrected by other uh, scholars and they say that 384 pan diagonal magic squares can be constructed so this is exactly what narayana pandita states in his work then we find another scholar vijay raghavan in 1942 he publishes a paper and then uh, he provides a uh, certain very interesting properties he lists out so it is also there in rosser walker's paper but he has presented slightly differently the various properties of these magic squares so then we find uh, this uh, famous uh, people datta and singh so having an article which has been revised by shukla and this is also published so then further recently in 2018 so one of the mathematicians who is still i think she is uh, in uh, france so she provides some proofs of some of the properties 
in a uh, modern mathematical language. But the inspiration for us was in uh, once again revisiting this topic is that so this Turagagati, which has been the title which has been given by Narayana Pandita. So how does it really fit in with the algorithm that he has provided? How do we understand the term in terms of the algorithm that he provides in constructing pan diagonal magic square? So this was the idea. We found that uh, they were not very satisfactory, the works that have been done earlier. So we try to once again get into this. So when I say we, so myself, uh, Professor Srinivas and one of my students, so Surya Narayana. So we three were looking at this recently. So this is just for those who are interested in uh, Ganita Kaumudi and various things that is being discussed there. So here is the chapter which is called Bhadra Ganita. So this is uh, where we are just going to lift a few verses and look into. Okay? So there are various other interesting topics. So this is an important work. So just to uh, excite some of the audience, I will tell you in Sedi Vyavahara, so Narayana Pandita gives a very interesting verse. So this has to do with the cow population. Okay. <laughs> Suppose you let the population of cow keep growing, so what will happen? So that is the kind of question that he poses there. I'll tell you, uh, this, this is uh, verse goes like this. Prativarisham uh, gauhu uh, sute varshatritayena tarnaki tasyaha vidvan vimshati varshaihi gau rekasyascha santatim kathaya. So what is the problem? Assume that a cow gives rise to a cough, birth gives every year, okay, gives birth to a cough. And nowadays they have this kind of insemination. Assume that it gives only female, <laughs> okay, assume. So then he says, you need, uh, see, the, the problem is because he poses the problem in such a way. Prativarsham gauhu sute means. It gives birth. Varshat Tritayena. In three years, the cough also starts producing. So in 20 years, oh mathematician, tell me how many cows you will have. Okay. So this has to do with sums of sums. And it is a very, very interesting problem. So which I have given to some of my own students as I teach the course. And I don't think any of them come with the answer very quickly. Because they have not studied it. That kind of a thing. What it has to do with is sums of sums. We study, so 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n is n plus 1. Now, if I have a sequence of sums, so 1, 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2 plus 3, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. So that is the kind of sequence that you need to know. And uh, so that gives, so such kinds of very interesting problems have been presented by Narayana Pandita, which we don't find in certain other works. Okay, that is the importance of this work. So when was this Narayana born? So there is an interesting verse, which again gives the details of his birth. So we understand that it's not writing. So here, so this, uh, we understand that it is 1356. Huh. So this, that's okay. The, the birth time is, so around this time he completed this work. Okay. So Gurau Samaptim Gatam Ganitam. Okay. So, samaptim gatam ganitam means, so this work which I undertook to write, so got over on this date. Okay, so this gives us the period of Narayana Pandita, but not the birth, birth of this work. <laughs> okay. We don't find much details about uh, Narayana Pandita, uh, so where he was living, etc., etc. But there is interesting verse, another interesting verse about his father. So he glorifies that he was an extraordinary scholar. So since we may not have time, so I'll just skip this verse. So he just says his father was Drisimha. Uh, Drisimha <laughs> means a terror. So it is like, uh, see, suppose some people, so if you are an extraordinary scholar in a discipline, then if you come for Vaiva, so the student will be in terror, right? So similarly, like this, so here he says, so whenever my father goes, everybody will be in the assembly. 
So that is the kind of glory that he associates with his father's extraordinary scholarship. Okay. <coughs> now, how does Narayana classify the magic squares? This is a different kind of a classification. In the first slide, I showed you that magic squares can be classified as semi-magic, normal magic, and pan-diagonal magic. Narayana considers only pan-diagonal magic squares construction of. Okay, so that is what he primarily deals with this, in this chapter. So he makes a different kind of classification. He says Samagarbha is one, Vishamagarbha is second, and Vishama is third. So what does Samagarbha means? So if uh, you consider uh, a magic square n by n. So this n, if it uh, happens to be a multiple of four, you call it samagarbha. Okay. So if n is four times m, okay, m is an integer, then you call it samagarbha. If n is of the type 4n plus 4m plus 2 type, you call it vishama, vishama garbha. Okay. And the third, if n happens to be 4m plus 1 type, so then it is, so this is vishama, okay, that kind of a thing. So that is what he classifies. So samagarbham, samagarbha, vishamagarbhe, vishamancheti, tridha bhavet, bhadram. So here is what I was mentioning. So bhadram is the name that they give for magic square. So bhadraganita means the mathematics connected with the generation of magic square. So that is how it is. So then he explains basically whatever I was trying to explain to you. So how do you go about constructing this? So these are the three verses that we are going to deal with now. In fact, one and a half verse will basically give you the algorithm. <laughs> so the rest is all uh, more details, how to generate higher order and so on. Okay. So here is where you find the term Chaturanga Turagagatya. So Chaturanga is a term which is used to refer to the game of chess. Okay. So this chess board so is basically called as Chaturanga. Okay. <laughs> Chaturanga Turagagatya. So whatever be the kind of so this is chess board. So Turagagatya. So Turaga, as I told you, is horse. The move, move of the horse. Then what does he say? Dvau dvau shredhi samudbhava vankau. Shredhi, as I was mentioning to you, refers to a sequence. Shredhi samudbhava means the numbers which are generated through an arithmetic sequence. Okay? That is how we need to understand. So, Udbhava means that which is generated. So, Shredhi Samudbhavau Ankau. Ankau is a dual. Okay, Ankaha. See, so this, so Ramaha Ramau. Similarly, <laughs> Ankaha Ankau. So, he says pairs of numbers. So, pairs of numbers chosen from an arithmetic sequence have to be placed by the horse move as you do in a chess game. So this is what this first line means. Chaturanga Turagagatya Dvau Dvau means you should always consider pairs. Okay, Which pair to consider that we will see little later now. All that he says is just choose pairs of numbers from an arithmetic sequence and place them in horse moves as you do in a chess game. Then, Nyasya. Nyasya means having placed them. Kramotkramena cha koshthaikya ekantarena cha. So, these phrases have to be carefully understood. And uh, they actually give us a certain freedom to interpret in a couple of ways. So, Kramotkramena is a certain phrase. So, what we need to understand by the term koshtha is, suppose you consider a magic square, 
4 by 4. So the, any of the cells is what is called as a koshtha. Okay. Koshtha. Koshtha means a cell. Koshthaikya means, so, so you just put, suppose you place a number here, you place another number so that it is adjacent to that. So then you call it Koshthaikya. So for instance, so this is a Koshthaikya. So this will be a Koshthaikya. Okay. So this can also be a Koshthaikya. And the fourth one can be here. So this is Koshthaikya. When you fold it as a torus, there are only four possibilities. So Koshthaikya. Okay. If you go by the adjacent, okay, along the rows and columns. If you consider going along the diagonal, then obviously you will have eight, four more. Okay. So then what will happen is, so this, this can also be considered as a Koshthaikya. Okay. So there will be a different thing. So, and these two. <laughs> so will be the Koshthaikyas, if you consider diagonal. Okay. Now, that is why I said this provides a certain flexibility for us to interpret. And uh, you choose a different interpretation, then also you will be able to construct. So that is what is very interesting about it. Okay. Koshthaikya ekantarena cha tau. Then, Savya Savya Toranga Maritya. This Savya Savya. See, in fact, some of you who are familiar with this Bhagavad Gita, so you will find the word Savya Sachin. <laughs> Arjuna will be described as Savya Sachin. So, one who can, Savya is used to generally refer to left. Okay. So, Asavya means right. So, he will be able to even shoot from the left kind of a thing. <laughs> okay. Savya Asavya Turangama Ritya. So, Savya and Asavya, they are actually opposite. So, if you consider Savya as left, Asavya will be right. Okay. So, this is, a, so the, the horse moves, so have to be thought of as left horse move, right horse move. So, this is the kind of picture that we get from this. So, what does it literally mean? So, we'll just see in a minute. Okay. So, these are just to um, familiarize you with the terms that are used in the verse. Savya asavya turangama ritya. Then what does he say? He says, koshthan prapurayet. May you just fill the cells. So, this is all he is saying. Okay. Then he further goes on. Samagarbhe shodasha graha bhadre prokto vidhishchayam. So, samagarbha, as I told you. So, this prescription that is being given by Narayana is valid only for magic squares or with n is equal to 4m type. Okay, samagarbha. And when I say samagarbha, this is obviously valid for a 4 by 4. It will be valid for 8 by 8, 12 by 12 and so on. You can build upon. So, samagarbhe shodashagraha bhadre. But here, he just takes a simple example. Okay, so with 16 cells. Samagarbhe shodashagraha bhadre. Proktaha vidhishchayam. So this can be sort of extended to higher also. So that we will talk about a little later. He talks about. Tiryak koshtha gatanam urdhasthanancha karnaganancha ankanam sanyogaha. So sankanam sanyogaha means when you add this. Okay. When you add the numbers where tiryak koshtha gatanam. Tiryak means horizontally. So all the rows. Okay. So, Urdhvasthananche, consider the columns. Then, Karnagananche, he just gives a generally. So, Karna means a hypotenuse. That is why I told you initially, Trikona and the hypotenuse. Okay. So, you think of the diagonals. So, all the diagonals, he doesn't say that you choose the principal diagonal or anti diagonal. So, Karnagananche is a generic statement that he makes. So, you can see that the construction actually leads to a pan diagonal magic square. Karnagananche ankanam sanyogaha prachangmitaha. Separately, you count. What you will get is tulyaha, the same sum. Okay, jayate tulyaha. So, this is what he says. This is essentially the algorithm so which has been presented by. Uh, Narayana Pandita. See, Koshthan Prapurayet Samagarbhe Prokto Vidhishchaya. So, this is all just explanation. Now, 
narayana pandita also gives a, a certain kind of explanation very shortly okay so in the text that has been printed we find a very brief explanation in prose so there this is all he gives nothing much the explanation is he says prathama yamalanka yugalam dvitiyam tritiyam chatuttham so he chooses this example so you take 1 to 16 so you divide them into four groups yamala is to yamalanka yugala is again to a pair of pairs that is what it means so you have taken 1 2 3 4 then dvitiyam 5 6 7 8 then tritiyam so this 12 and up to 16 then he says prathama kona lagnihi prathama yamalanka yugalaihi jataha chatur vimshati bhedaha so this is a very interesting statement this is a very very succinct statement that he makes so we will see all this little later so he says uh, chatur vimshati bhedaha means there are 24 possibilities so with with the so what he is trying to say is you with one number take four other pairs okay so you fill them then you will get 24 different possibilities okay tesham darshanam means there is a diagram which gives basically that these are the uh, four 24 ways then finally he says evam anyehi yamalanka yukalaihi chatur vimshati bhedaha bhavanti so he just uh, in short he is explaining but what is more interesting here in narayana's work is this statement having explained this he says evam chatur bhadrasya chatur bhihi yamalaihi chatur ashitya shatatraya bheda so chatur ashiti means 84 shatatraya means 300 so he says that you will be able to generate 384 different magic squares with numbers 1 to 16 okay so pan, all of them pan diagonal magic squares okay so now we have few notations before we try to explain further so let m be the pan diagonal magic square okay so the elements are denoted by this uh, ij okay so the indices so there are 16 cells and the set basically is this 1 to 16. So as Narayana said, you broadly divide them into four groups, S1, S2, S3, S4. Now we are defining the horse move, see, Turaga Gati, so that is what it is, okay, Turaga Gati, we consider pairs, remember this, we are just considering pairs, 1, 2 is a pair, 1, 3 is a pair, 3, 4 is a pair. So similarly, so 5, 6, 5, 7 and 7, 8. So what am I doing? So I am not say, taking 2, 3, remember. So 1 to 2 is a horse move, 1 to 3 is a horse move, 3 to 4 is a horse move. Similarly, 5 to 6, 5 to 7, 7 to 8. So here we are choosing this kind of pairs to just demonstrate that the entire magic square can be filled with this kind of horse moves and you will be able to see a nice pan diagonal magic square and all the 384 possibilities you will be able to capture here so one more thing uh, for making our understanding easy you may remember i was showing you the phrase savya savya turangama ritya so savya savya turangama ritya so savya savya as i told you it is like left right up down kind of a thing you can just take it this way now so we for convenience are using this u d l r what do they mean so the horse move suppose i move from p to q if I choose this, I call it as up move, urdhva, okay, because I just go and place Q up. If I place Q below, 
so this i call it as down move if i choose this horse move there are only four possibilities so mind you so by horse move there are only four possibilities these four we are classifying this as a left and this as right if you consider the torus then obviously so the up move will be this so down move will be this and the left move will be this and the right move will be this so this is what we will be getting okay so this is just to familiarize you with the notation and the explanation that will be given there are two more terms which i told you kosthaikya and kosthantara so for instance if you consider the two cells one that is in green and the other one that is in blue okay so this you can consider as kosthaikya kosta antara means this is the diagonally kosthaikya remember so one can think of horizontally and vertically kosthaikya so this is diagonally kosthaikya whereas this blue cell and the yellow cell here see so these are in kosthantara okay so one cell in between so one can either consider it diagonally and if you want to conceive of see placing a number p here and placing another number q here this can also be considered as kosthantara but this will be diagonally kosthantara okay so if you place your q here this is kosthaikya horizontally or vertically so these two terms can either refer to something which is adjacent to it in the same row or column or diagonally so there are two possibilities that is why i said so the verse as such gives us the freedom to interpret both ways and one can arrive at the magic square by considering both but what we tried to do was so one of the most elegant ways of looking at the problem okay so earlier have attempted but uh, this seems to be more elegant now another uh, word that you found in the verse is kramena utkramen ha ah. so i will just take you to the verse just quickly if you see here so kramot kramena this is the phrase that we are considering now this kramot kramena we interpret this word as see suppose you move so suppose you have the sequence 1 2 3 4 So when you move from one to two, so this is a krama, krama horse move. If you choose one to three, so you will call it as utkrama horse move. Similarly, if I were to go from three to four, I will call it as a krama, and if I were to go from two to four. i will call it as utkrama jumping one in between so when we place these numbers so we have to keep these things in mind krama and utkrama and here narayana pandita only says that you have to choose pairs of them and it can be done in krama and utkrama manner so suppose you consider the next set So five, six, seven, and eight. Then, so if I were to jump from one to five, and the next set, let us say, is nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So choosing the next, choosing the neighbor within the same set is krama motion. but if you were to consider all the four sets then moving from 1 to 5 will be a krama and moving from 1 to 9 will be considered as utkrama okay just like leaving two in between and going to three is utkrama within the set moving from 1 to 9 is utkrama across the sets okay 
So both these uh, terminologies have to be kept in mind. Now we move on to explain the algorithm. How do you go about filling? So let us for convenience choose one in the left most top corner. Then there are a set of rules. Okay. So how do you place this second number? The second has to be in horse move. So you can either choose this or you can choose this or you can choose this or you can choose this. So this is up to me. There are four possibilities. From one, there are only four possibilities for placing two because it has to be in horse move. So I have chosen this. Having placed, see, this kind of a move, suppose what I have chosen here is a down move. So this will be described as right move. So this will be described as left move. And this will be described as up move. Okay. There are four different possibilities. D, U, L, R, R. You can place choosing any one of them. Having placed the two, now you can place three and as I showed you, this has to be in horse move with one. So how many possibilities you will have? You will have three possibilities. So what I have chosen here is up because you move here. So this, so if you move here, up move, this will be folded back in the torus. So this is up move. So there are two more possibilities, but we have not considered them. Okay. So this is 1 to 2, 1 to 3. This is in horse move. So don't ask me why did you place here. I can place anywhere, but I am just as an illustration. Now the rule is having placed 1, 2 and 3, 4 has to be placed in such a way that it is in horse move with both 2 and 4. Uh, sorry, 2 and 3. This is the only possibility that you have. 4 has to be placed such that it is in horse move with both 2 and 3. Okay. So now we have filled 1, 2, 3, 4. Where do we place 5? Okay. So where do we place 5? So this is from one set to other set we are moving. So remember Narayana said you consider four sets s1 s2 s3 and s4 now what we did was so we chose all the elements in s1 now we are moving from s1 to s2 in moving so you consider the first element here in s1 and consider the first element in s2 which is number five and this has to be once again in horse move with one so now you have two possibilities so this is one possibility and this is another possibility. There are only two possibilities. I can choose one of them. So I have chosen this now. Okay. Then what do you do? You have to play six. So here I must tell you that once you choose a certain scheme for placing one to four, you follow the same scheme for all the four others, all the three other sets that you have. You have chosen a particular pattern for filling 1 to 4 and you choose the same pattern. Okay. So this Yamalanka Yugalam. Okay. So what did I do? I chose a down motion for 2. Now I choose a down motion for moving from 5 to 6. So again a down motion. Okay. So this is what has been given in this uh, table here. So if you choose a pattern for 1 to 2, Choose the same pattern for 5, 6. Choose the same pattern for 9, 10. Choose the same pattern for 13, 14. Similarly, whatever pattern you choose for 1, 3, you choose the same for 5, 7. So this is what the table basically means. But in doing so, so whenever you sort of encounter that already a certain cell is filled, then the horse move has to be reversed. What do I mean by this? I mean, suppose the six, the cell is already filled here, then instead of placing six here, you have to place six here. That is all. Reversed means, so this up will become down and the left will become right and vice versa. 
okay so this is what we mean by reverse okay so now you see um, so from 1 to 3 we had up move so similarly 5 to 7 we have an up move okay so then i move on to 8 so having placed 5 6 and 7 there is only one cell which is available for placing 8 okay so which is in horse move with 7 as well as <coughs> 6 okay so 6 and 7 so 8 will be in horse move like 4 is in horse move with 2 and 3 okay so then what do you do with 9 so with 1 you chose you said 1 and 2 are in horse move 1 and 3 are in horse move 1 and 5 are in horse move just recall so this is set s1 this is set s2 the first element was 1 here the first element was 5 here and set s3 the first element will be 9 here and it will go up to 12 and set 4 will be so 13 to 16. Now what I am saying is so you chose 1 and 2 in horse move 1 and 3 in horse move then 1 and 5 in horse move then 1 and 9 will also be in horse move. That is all. So 1 and 9 if you place in horse move so this is all Yamalanka Yugala remember and uh, this is chosen this is Koshthaikya this is Koshthantara and Koshthaikya is 5 across the sets Koshthantara is 9. So there is only one position that is available for placing 9. Okay. So there is no other option available all the four are exhausted now. So you place that that is the only position available. So then again, so you have to just fill in similarly 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. So in the same manner you have to fill. And uh, when you come to 13, <coughs> when you come to 13, so 13, again, you will see that there is only one position which is available for placing 13 in horse move from 9. Okay. So from 9, there will be only one position that will be available and you fill it in there. And uh, so the rest is all just filled in the same manner. So you will have 13 to 14 filled, 15 filled and 16, the last one filled. Okay. Now, a quick analysis now. <clears throat> so having uh, filled in, so by this horse moves, you see that initially while placing 1 to 2, there were 4 possibilities that were available. For placing 3 in horse move with 1, okay, so there were 3 positions that were available. So 4 into 3, there are 12 possible configurations. Okay. As I told you, if you say that the 4 has to be placed in horse move with both 2 and 3, then there is no choice that is available. There is only one choice that is available. But however, between 4 and 5 for placing, okay. So 1 and 5 will be in horse move and it will be sort of adjacent anyway. So there are only two possibilities that you will find for moving in horse move from one to five. And that will just happen that it will be adjacent to four that you can anyway see. So there are two possibilities. Now you can see that there are 24. Once one, two, three, four and five are fixed, the rest of the square is completely fixed. You have absolutely no freedom. So that is why you get this number Narayana was mentioning Chaturvimshati. There are 24 possibilities. The 24 possibilities have been listed here in this table for you. Okay. So very quickly. So a few properties I'm just going to tell you. So this uh, any 2 by 2 square. So chosen consecutively. So for instance, you choose any 2 by 2 like this. Okay. So that will give you the magic sum. And the second property is if you choose a number here, so for instance, you choose one here. So the other number, as I told you earlier, so this and this will add up to 
half of the magic sum s by 2 okay so for instance i have 3 here then so what should be here this should be 14 so that is what it means so this is another property which he said uh, something which you can observe once you fill this so this is a property of pan diagonal magic square and uh, third property is something which is more peculiar so it is, this has to do with uh, this filling so see for instance suppose i have one here then the third property tells that so this obviously is 16 by second property so the third property tells that so these numbers will be unique so for instance with one you can have only 2, 9, 3, and 5. Okay. So, in other words, if you have 16, you can visualize it as this will be always sandwiched by 2, 3, 5, and 9. And this is possible by four factorial ways. Okay. With 1, 16 has to be here. 2, 3, 5, and 9 can be arranged in four factorial ways. And thereby also you can view it as 24 possibilities which is what Narayana says. And finally, what you heard under, these are all just proofs uh, for those who are interested. The slides will be anyway shared. So for those who are interested, these are just uh, proofs of those properties. All that I was trying to tell you is, so this diagram sort of summarizes. So one to two is a horse move. One to three is a horse move. One to five is a horse move. And one to nine is a horse move, okay? Similarly, you can very easily uh, fix. So this is what I was trying to tell you. It was telling that 2, 3, 5, and 9 are the four numbers which should occupy the four cells by into which you can jump from 1 by horse move. So this is something which is unique for every other number also. So all that we say is, so this is in Koshthaikya. So this is in Koshthantara and this is in Koshthaikya across. So leaving one cell, one Yamalanka Yugula and this is in Koshthantara. So leaving one cell in between. Okay. So Yamalanka Yugula. So that thereby you can say that. So the, the only number that you can think of. So which will be surrounding. Okay. Uh, or the, that will result when you move from 2 to <laughs> any other horse position will be 1, 4, 6, and 10. This you can fix for uh, 1 to 16. So ye, it need not necessarily be 1 to 16. So this is just a table which shows what are the four unique numbers. And these are the all configurations. Now I make a few concluding remarks. So this uh, study of... Uh, pan diagonal magic squares, particularly by Turagagati, has been very succinctly put by Narayana Pandita, as I told you. A few studies which have already gone earlier, so they have proposed a slightly different variant. Some of the studies, they just consider this Koshthaikya in a different way. But what we have just shown is, so you choose pairs such that all of them move by horse move. So this is a very interesting algorithm. And as I told you, there are more than one interpretation that are possible. So earlier scholars have attempted in a different way, but uh, this we found quite exciting. Okay. And uh, why we believe that this could be the way Narayana Pandita might have conceived of is this uh, seems to be more optimal as we can see, and uh, Indians have uh, always <laughs> been arguing for what is called the Laghava. If you go in Shastra, whether it is Vedanta or Mimamsa, so they will uh, say this is this is essentially this Occam's razor, as we call in uh, other language. Okay, so this seems to be quite elegant. And uh, one more thing, which I incidentally mentioned. And by choosing this Nagarjuna square, I tried to explain to you that it need not necessarily be an arithmetic sequence. So starting with 1 to 16, you can choose any arithmetic sequence for that matter. This is number one. You also can choose four 
sequences each consisting of four numbers so then also you will get a nice pan diagonal magic square that is what was demonstrated in the nagarjuna square right at the beginning i showed you so we chose but they were not in continuous sequence so there there is one condition which has to be satisfied so this condition suppose you have the first sequence a1 a2 a3 a4 second sequence b1 b2 b3 b4 the third sequence c1 c2 c3 c4 and the fourth sequence then the condition is a1 plus d1 should be equal to b1 plus c1 that is all so once you choose uh, four yamalanka yugalas like this that will be so then one small uh, observation so many of you will be knowing this famous person donald nuth so this is just to share my own experience as someone who entered into the study of history of science so donald nuth in one of his lectures he makes this observation he says my major failing as a teacher was that i was not able to get a single one of my 28 phd students <laughs> to realize what a thrill it is to work with source material in fact this is uh, the kind of experience that we had when we tried to look into this magic squares and we tried to trace back so where all uh, so this has figured in the literature so there is a lot of thrill in trying to work with uh, the ancient texts and uh, final remark is so i thought i'll just quote the cv raman so somehow i feel that uh, we have not made enough efforts to make our own people aware of the rich scientific heritage that we had this as raman rightly observes is likely to generate a certain inferiority complex without our knowledge so this is what raman feels so he says i think what is needed in india today is the destruction of this defeatist spirit so one may argue no 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 it is not present etc but uh, i believe that there is some substance in what raman says so this is from my own experience i would say and i'm sure some of you would agree with this so we need a spirit of victory a spirit that will carry us to the rightful place under the sun and uh, so raman also says we are inheritors of a proud civilization okay and that kind of a spirit see is something which is worth building by trying to carefully present what is there so here one has to be extremely cautious so there are a few people who try to uh, claim little far more than what is there but that is something which should be avoided but if we present it in the right way so like this was quite exciting topic so there are a few other things like this so if we go into the history of the science in india so i think this will be quite exciting so there are quite a few things which need to be solved in astronomy for instance so i have been working at least for the past 25 30 years so even then i feel that there is plenty to do more so this uh, way of presenting the things carefully what has been done by ancients so will enable us to shed away the cultivated ignorance and uh, nothing can hold us back Thank you for your attention. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you Ram. Thank you very much. Yeah. Awesome session. I have one one question before anybody else asks. Okay. <laughs> uh, I remember reading long ago there is also some composition of verse where if you pick the words sitting at the turak gati position, you get another verse. Is, Correct. Is that right. Correct. You are right. Absolutely right. This is what is called Turaga Bandha in the uh, uh, Sahitya literature. What people do is they pose a variety of questions to question the uh, to test the scholarship of this person. So one, uh, in fact, there are two, three verses. <laughs> so that reminds me. in fact myself and professor shrinivas we spent a few days working out one and also write in detail so this is yet to be published so this turaga bandha 
is a certain way wherein you have to say suppose so how many squares do you have so in a chessboard you have 64 right so you fill half the chessboard so that is anushtu vritta the anushtu vritta will have 32 syllables four syllables per quarter so you write them now you go and pick okay the next syllable by a horse move mm -hmm. then also if you just join them together it should give rise to another verse which is meaningful <laughs> so this is one of the toughest examination that can be provided but there are people who have attempted it and successfully attempted and that is quite interesting yes i am happy that you reminded me of that so hopefully that should come <laughs> if, if you remember if you remember an example can you give us ah example i can trace in this uh, all right okay yeah, yeah i have to just locate that it is there yeah i don't remember the verse by heart yeah 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 okay we well, welcome to two or three questions please ask <clears throat> Sir, is there any similarity uh, between uh, this and the Kubera Chakra that we write, which uh, sums up to 72, whether it is diagonal, horizontal, or... Uh, um... I haven't uh, heard the word Kubera Chakra. So I don't know what exactly you mean. Okay. Uh, yeah. Should, should I so, write an email, sir, on that? Yeah, yeah, you can send an email. So, okay. Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> Yeah, so that uh, basically what I understand uh, from the term that you are employing is so this uh, like a Shri Chakra, for instance, mm -hmm. so it is a certain kind of a construction. Okay. Yeah. So similarly, that Kubera Chakra, Kubera is considered to be the Dhanajipati, and therefore mm -hmm. that could be another chakra. So, where so, people uh, believe that uh, that could attract money towards you. Okay, mm -hmm. so that could be the kind of a thing. So if I were to make a guess, so that is what I was indicating to you here, for instance, so 72. So mm -hmm. here, it uh, in this <laughs> slide, you see, it is used for a barren woman. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, no, no. What I mean is, so yeah. if you have this, then you will be circumventing the kind of problem that you have. So that is the idea. Ah, okay, okay. Thank Not you. to become, but to, to overcome. <laughs> All right. Any more questions? You can also write to Professor Ram Subramanian. The address is given. Yeah. Uh, so let us close this session. Thank you very much, Ram. It has been excellent. I yeah, think it was well, well, well attended. You attracted more people than we normally do to the talk. Okay. <laughs> thank you thank very you. much. Yeah, thank thanks you. Thanks for providing this opportunity. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. We'll thank be you. there. Just switch off the general thing. We can still talk to Ram, take him for coffee. So yeah. to say. <laughs> Equivalent of taking you to coffee with three or four.